Hey, what's up you guys? It's Tyler from The Harringtons, and we're back today with a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through something that I am actually doing live. This is not pre-recorded, this is not after the fact. This is something that I am legitimately need to do for an actual wedding client, and I wanna show you the exact process that I use to get started on a film. We all know that when you shoot a wedding, you come back and you just got tons and tons of footage. You've got from different cards, different audio sources, and getting started can be really daunting. So I wanna show you is exactly what I do to get started on a wedding film. I am getting ready to start on Paul and Ashley's wedding film here, and I haven't done anything to this project yet. I've created a premiere project and I've imported the clips from all the different cards and all the different audio sources, but that's pretty much all that I've done so far. So I'm gonna jump in here and you're gonna see exactly what I do as I get started on a wedding and my calling process, my organization process, just all the different things that I go through as I'm getting started on a wedding edit. So let's jump into this and I'll show you exactly how this all works. All right, so here we are. We are inside Premiere Pro CC 2018. I actually just upgraded yesterday. I was trying to hold off and finish all these wedding films before I upgraded, but I was having a ton of problems with CC 2017 with it just crashing. So here we are in 2018. So um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the footage. As you can see here, I have all of our footage imported from all of the different cameras, and then we are going to start the calling process. So uh, basically what you see here is like I said, I have a a footage folder where I have a specific folder for each camera that we use. Um, we use uh, five cameras throughout the day, mostly just three that we're using. The camera that I carry, the camera Ash carries, then the A6300, with, which is our gimbal camera. The 5D and the 6D in these cases are just used during the ceremony and used as an extra third angle on a tripod during the ceremony a little bit. So we're not going to worry too much about those at this point. Um, the only other thing we have here is we have the same day edit, which I so I make a same day edit for every single wedding film, and then what I'll do is I'll come home uh, and on Monday after the wedding I'll bring it all into Premiere here, which is why I have this project to begin with. I'll import it. I'll kind of polish it up a little bit, just take the edits that I did on the wedding day, polish it up, and then we post it online on Tuesday. So that film is already posted, that's been up for a while now, but now I'm getting started on their feature film. So the way that I like to do it is I like to have a separate sequence made for each camera that I'm going to use for culling. So really my three primary cameras, so that C both C100s and the A6300, right? I like to have a separate timeline for each one of those, and then what I'll do is I'll go through each clip individually, and I'll bring it down in, uh, into those sequences. I'm gonna show you that whole process right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new bin by clicking on the new bin icon here, and I'm gonna call it Sequences. Okay, and then within the sequences, we're going to have a couple different, a couple different folders. So I, one of them is going to be Call Sequences. Right, that's uh, where all of the all of my call sequences are going to live. We also are going to have um, regular sequences, which is going to be where I put like um, any different timelines that I create. And then we're also going to have um, a thing that's called nested sequences. Um, and oops, I spelled that wrong. The reason I do nested sequences is because. Um, the way that Premiere works is if you use Warp Stabilizer on any clips that are not the same dimensions as your timeline. So for me, my A6300, I shoot that in 4K a lot. So if I wanna do any Warp Stabilizer on my 6300 footage, um, I need to nest that before I can actually stabilize that. And then also on slow-mo clips. So if you have a clip that you're putting slow motion on, uh, Premiere does not allow you to use slow motion and Warp Stabilizer on the same clip. So for any of those two instances, a 4K, uh, 6300 clip or any clip that's in slow motion in order to use warp stabilizer stabilizer on it which I use a lot you're going to have to nest it so I need somewhere to put all those nested sequences okay so then so then within call sequences I'm just going to make uh, three sequences one and I just named them C100 tie call uh, another one called C100 ash call. Now you can you, you can name these whatever you want, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, you just want to make sure you know what they are. And A6200 call. Okay, perfect. So I have all those things. So I have all my uh, call sequences and that's all I'm going to need. And then, oh, I forgot. I'm going to have one more folder in here and that's going to be for synced sequences. And this is where all of our pluralized uh, 
imports are going to go. So the things that I use sync sequences for are going to be things like the ceremony where I have multicams, for any speeches where we have multicams, and then for the dances where I have multicams, right? All three of those situations, we have multiple cameras, multiple audio sources, and we want them to all be synced together seamlessly. So I use a program called Pluralize to make these multicam sequences. And then when I import them, I need to import them somewhere specific so that they are separate from everything else. Um, and if you wanna see exactly how I go through my entire process of syncing everything, using Pluralize, importing it, all that good stuff, I'll link a video to that right here. Um, I have a multicam sequences video that should walk you through that entire process. So. Yeah, so that's there. We're not going to put anything in there right now. I just like to build out all the folders right at the beginning. Again, keeping everything nice and organized. Okay, so once we have all these things created, we're going to go ahead and open them all up down here. So we have all of our... Um, all of our different call sequences open. And then we are done creating folders. So the last thing we need to create is going to be an FX slash stills folder. Uh, and this is where I'll store anything that's extra and anything again, it's just uh, so any images I need to import our end card, um, if we just really anything extra, uh, uh, different uh, adjustment layers, really anything extra that kind of just gets in. I just like to have a folder for that. So the first thing I do before I get started with anything else is I like to make all these folders just to keep everything nice and organized. Okay, so now I'm going to go through really quickly. I'm just going to show you, um, I'm going to get started in the just the culling process and kind of show you the way I have everything worked out, the hotkeys I use and all that jazz. Okay. So we're going to start with C100 tie call. Okay, so this is going to be my C100 camera. We have two different C100 cameras. Um, so this is going to be mine. So if I'm going to go into footage, go to C100 tie, and then I have these broken down between my regular footage, uh, which is the AVC HD codec in the, within the C100, and that's everything that's 24p. And then I have all my slow-mo clips. The way I have my C100 set up, it actually separates those on the card, which I actually kind of like because then I... Um, I know which ones are which and they're not all kind of in intermingled together and that's just part of partially due it's the fastest way to switch between slow-mo and 24p on a wedding day i found so anyway so i'm going to open up the regular bin and that's going to create a, a new bin here so some people like using this thumbnail view i personally don't i just find it to be kind of slow and it's not how i'm i got used to starting to do this so i'm going to switch this back to the regular uh, thumbnail view. I like to keep this as big, you know, all the way here. So the biggest thumbnails, and then I come up here to the little uh, sandwich icon here, and I always turn on thumbnails. So what this does is it gives you a little preview here of what the shots are, so you have a general idea. And this is all sorted just uh, based on the name coming out of the camera. So it starts from the very first clip of the day and goes all the way through the last clip of the day, okay? So then from here, what I do is I literally, I just start going through each clip. So if I double click on it, it opens up over here. I hit spacebar. I do as much of this with hotkeys as possible. So all I'm really doing is double clicking on things and then everything else for the most part is done with hotkeys. So double click on it to open um, and then what I usually do is I'm going to grab my little plate here and I kind of go through this as, as, as really fast to scrub to see kind of where it's going to start and to see if this is going to be something I like to use as opposed to just playing it from the beginning here because you know, I've got all this stuff I've got to watch through and I've just found that for me I prefer to just kind of like grab it and scrub right to where the action starts. Okay so this is where the first move is going to start so I hit little I on my keyboard to hit the end point, space bar to play go to where I think that it's good. Okay, so right about there, I'm gonna hit O on the keyboard, and then I hit comma to drop it down into my timeline, okay? So uh, you can see right here that if you use comma, you're going to insert the clip, and if you have hit period, you're going to overwrite. Okay, so I almost always hit comma just as a habit. Um, and the main difference is going to be, if you see if I hit comma, it's gonna just keep pushing, uh, pushing those clips forward as opposed to if I have, you know, say this is a little bit longer and I hit period, see how it's just sort of, it's cut into this and it's it's overwriting stuff. I don't want that. I just want it to be put down into the timeline and I want to just keep adding new clips. So I hit comma just like this. And usually what I'll do is for CC 2018, you have to hold down option and then you basically just like scroll your, uh, your scroll wheel with, with your mouse right in the middle here. So hold down option, scroll, uh, and then it's going to make these a little bit bigger. And this is pretty much how I leave it. And you'll see here that the playhead automatically jumps to the end of this clip. Okay, so then I can just keep going. Okay, so I've done this. You know, I liked where I had it. 
now let's see here so now it's going to be coming back oh so someone jumped in that clip don't need that okay perfect so then i'm going to go to the next one so here you can see that i already uh i already pulled a in and out point for this clip that i probably used for the um for the same day edit so i'm just going to hit comma perfect keep going all right next clip here I like to just jump through it. So I see how I did that. I just scrubbed through it so I don't waste time. And I can see like, oh, this isn't this is a dud, mom, you know, mom walked through. Okay, next one. Okay, here we go. Is this gonna be any good? No, I don't like any of that. Go to the next one. Okay. So now we're on to a separate I uh, moved. You see, move the camera. Don't like that. Okay, here. So this is good. I use this for the for the same day edit. Okay, so I'm gonna hit comma, put that down there, see if there's anything else that I like. Kind of like that. So in here, out here. Okay. So this is another thing you can do if you want. What I'll do is I'll do my warp stabilizer as I go, just so that um, it it starts working and it goes through the whole process. I don't have to do it later while I'm editing. It just already has a warp stabilizer on it. That's kind of a personal preference if you want to do that or not. But then I'm just going to keep going. All right. So I'm gonna. Here's this shot of the dress from the bottom here. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I think. Let's see if we have a good section of it. So maybe like here, starting in, over, out. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's down there. All right, so then we can see here that we're moving on to something else. So those are all the shots that I had of the dress. So now what I do is I'll put my uh, playhead all the way to the front, make sure that I don't have any clips selected by clicking off of it. I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard. And then you can see I have a little marker that's up here. I hold down Alt, and that allows me to drag the marker all the way out to here. Double click on it, and I'm going to name this, you know, Dress Slider Shots. Okay, perfect. All right, so now, um, now I can move on. So what I usually do here is move my playhead over, leave a little bit of a gap here. It doesn't really matter how much, just enough so that there's a visual gap there. And then I move on to the next clip. Okay, so then I keep going, and I try, you know, again, I'm just grabbing and fast forwarding here to see, okay, is any of this going to be useful? Nope, I don't really need any of that. What about this? Okay, so here the bridesmaids are opening their, their gifts. That's not really a good clip. Next one. Okay, so here we go. So now we've got a shot of her. She's pulling the, the wrapping off the box. I want to start around here. In point, eye on the keyboard, space. That's good. Out. Okay, keep going. Is there anything else? No. Next clip. Here we go, we're gonna fast forward, see what she's doing here. All right, so she's looking down, I kind of like that. I might be able to use that, so I'll pull this. It's a little shaky, but that's okay. Um, okay, next clip. What do we have here? Oh, so we have a shot of the box. Is it in focus for long enough? Not really, she moves it out of the way. Okay, so let's see. So she's smelling the candle here. Don't really like that, okay. Next. All right. So we didn't really get a ton from that. So if that happens, I'll either just kind of like delete both of these and just scrap it, or I might just leave them in there. You never really know. I also don't know exactly what Ash has on her camera. She could have gotten a really good angle from her side. So I'll probably just leave these in here. Um, I'll, I'll label them just for the sake of, you know, of what we're doing here today. So these are just, you know, bridesmaids opening gifts. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then we just keep going. All right, so now we're on to some details here. So you guys get the idea. So I pretty much just keep going through all the different clips. So here you can see it's a tighter shot. Um, and I say like, okay, is there any of this that looks usable? Not really. Okay, go to the next thing. And then, you know, that, maybe I can use this right here. That's pretty good. Okay, in, out, down. Boom, next shot. Shot of the, of the, of the earrings here. I needed to get a new fluid head, as you can see. I finally got one after this wedding. Uh, okay, so I can't really use any of that. So that's good. All right, so we've got a few detail shots here. Um, I don't really do a ton with detail shots, to be completely honest, so that's why there aren't very many. But you guys get the idea. So basically what you've seen here, um, I just do this for every single clip, right? I go through all the clips from all the cameras and I pull out the best of the best. Now something I've gotten, tried to get better at this year has been being more selective with the clips that I do include and not include. I used to just go literally anything that was somewhat usable, I would throw down into the timeline. And that doesn't always uh, become super beneficial 
at the end of the day. So I've tried you you can you'll learn it yourself as you go through this um, how to choose clips more wisely, which mar which moments to look for, all that good stuff. But I literally just do this over and over and over again through every single clip until I go through you know all the clips for the entire C100. Then I go on to Ash's cam and then I go on to the 6300, right? And the reason why I do this is because when I get to the editing part where I actually want to start editing, I've seen all of the clips. I've seen everything that I have to work with. It's fresh in my mind, but I also don't have to go back through and sift through all the different clips. I'm like, all right, I need a shot of the jewelry. Instead of having to try and go back into the footage, find the jewelry shots, then try and pull out the one that I think that is good. I just go on my timeline here to you know, bridesmaid opening gifts, whatever. Like I know if I go here, I'm what exactly what I'm gonna be getting. And then I, from there I can see on the thumbnails and I can just start picking the clips that I think are good and then sort of trimming them to fit into my timeline. So I'm gonna jump over really quickly to a finished project so you can see what this looks like at the end of the whole process. All right, so here we are. Now we are in Kate and Kevin's film, which we just finished up a couple weeks ago. And you can see that the uh, that the folder structure up here is exactly the same, right? I have all my folders broken out for the footage under my sequences. Now there are actually things in here under my call sequences. I have all these different cold sequences under nested. You can see how many times I nest. These are how many times I use uh, warp stabilizer for a film. And for our sync sequences, we have ceremony sync, parent dances, toasts. And if I open this up, you can see that I have this even broken down within. You've got the audio recorders. You know, it keeps everything all nice and compact. So it looks very clean um, when you have it all like this. But there's a ton, a ton of stuff that's going on here. So uh, and then that's all the sequences and all that good stuff. So but this down here is what a finished coal timeline looks like so this is the coal for my c100 from this wedding and you can see that we have starting with like you know steaming the dress dress details groom prep bride make bride makeup bride into dress bridal party downtown skyline pre-ceremony reception details city b-roll right so as i'm putting this film together i know exactly where to go to grab all these things and the way that i do this is i have a separate workspace here called feature film assembly so what i have the way i have this set up is i have this big box up here which is where all of my cold sequences go and then down here, I have the full ceremony edit, right? Wherever, when I start working on that. Uh, so, and the reason I have this set up this way is because I'm able to come up here. You know, if I go to tie call, I can zoom in, pick, pick out the clip that I want, say like, okay, I want this clip here. And then all I have to do is drag it down wherever I want it in my timeline. And I just keep going from there. So I have all of my different sequences here. So it's really quickly for me to go from tie call to 5D call to 6300 call, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really easy for me to just drag clips down where I need them. And it's all right here. I have eyes on them. I can see the thumbnails. I can see exactly what I'm working with. I can zoom in and out. And this is just the fastest way that I found for me to put my films together. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight into the way that I start the process and a little bit as to why I do it this way. I know that this isn't necessarily for everybody. And this is definitely a time consuming process. Like I'm not going to lie. It takes me a good amount of time to go through all the clips and to pull everything out into the cold sequences. But I have found that for me personally, that when I get into the final editing phase, that this is super helpful to be able to just go here, go exactly where I need, you know, city B-roll, come in here, have all these different shots at my disposal that I know are all gonna be good shots, drag them down and keep going. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. If you have a hard time getting started with your projects, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea as to how I do it. And hopefully you can take something away from this. Um, again, if you haven't seen that, multicam video if you're interested in the way I do multicam sequencing please check out that video uh, a lot of people have found it helpful and I hope you will too if you're new around here if you made it all the way to the end of this video thank you thank you so much please subscribe so you can get notified whenever we have more videos just like this um, and yeah check us out on social media Tyler Harrington is my name on Instagram and all that good stuff so thank you guys for checking this out until next time this has been Tyler from the Harringtons and I'll see you in the next one